Okay, guys. I'm here for episode 5 of Revisiting the Rumble, the review series where I revisit every Royal Rumble from, 19, from 1988 till 2015. Today we are looking at, for episode 5, Royal Rumble 1992. Took place on January the 19th, 1992 from the Knickerbock Arena in Albany, New York. The Royal Rumble, this Royal Rumble match is considered the greatest Royal Rumble match in the history of the WWE. But what about the rest of the show, though? We open with a tag match, as per tradition, because from 89 through 93, every opening contest at the Royal Rumble was a tag team match. It's the new foundation, Owen Hart and Jim Neidhart, versus the Orient Express, Kato and Tanaka. This is a three-star tag match. Not as good as the one the Rockers have, the Orient Express, but not bad. Uh, Neidhart and the New Foundation win with a rocket launcher move off the top rope. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, this is also the last appearance of Jim Neidhart and the WWE until 1994, I do believe. So, yeah. Three stars, so this show got off good. The next match is the only non-tag match on the undercard, as it's the WWE Intercontinental Championship match, as it's the Mountie defending against Rowdy Roddy Piper. Uh, this is a one-star match. This match isn't that great. Uh, the Mountie is the Intercontinental Champion. He had won the championship two days earlier from Bret Hart, who went against the advice of his doctor and wrestled with a 104-degree temperature. And then Piper came to his... Hearts aid and all that. Uh, this there is a, really isn't that good of a match. It's a one star match. Piper wins the sleeper and then he shocks the mountain with that shock stick. Uh, this, to be noted, is Roddy Piper's only championship in the WWE until 2006 when him and Ric Flair won the tag won the world tag titles on Raw. Uh, so one star. Eh. So then we get the Bushwhackers versus the Beverly Brothers. The Bushwhackers have Jameson in their corner with them. And the Beverly Brothers have the Genius in their corner with them. Uh, this is a one and a half star tag match. Like I said, the Bushwhackers are a comedy group. They were a comedy team. So they're never going to give you five star classics or anything like that. This is an okay tag match. It's one and a half stars. The Beverly is one of a double axe handle off the top rope. I have never had an idea which one was Bo and which one was Blake. I know that they were the, the destruction crew from uh, AWA. I know that, but I don't know which one was Bo and which one was Blake. I don't know which one Mike Enos played and which one uh, Wayne Bloom played. So, I believe Wayne Bloom was Bo and Mike Enos was Blake, but again, I could be wrong on that. Uh, it's one and a half stars, and then the Jameson kicks the genius in the shin and whatnot. So then we get the WWE Tag Team Championship match. The Legion of Doom versus Natural Disasters. It's a one star match. Natural Disasters win by count out, and for some reason they think they can win the championship via a count out, which you cannot do. Uh, so, one star. So then we get the 1992 Royal Rumble match, which is for the WWE Championship. So, much similar to what they're doing with the 2016 Royal Rumble, here we have the Royal Rumble for the Royal Rumble, the Royal Rumble match for the championship in 1992. Only difference between this one in 2016 and the 92 one is the championship is actually vacant going into the Royal Rumble because. At Tuesday in Texas, you know that throwaway house show that got turned into a pay-per-view that the WWE threw the Series 1991 under the bus for? Yeah. Well, Ho Hawk Hogan had won the championship from The Undertaker at that event. Which I may review, I may not one of these days. I don't really know. Uh, but anyway, Hawk Hogan defeated The Undertaker at that event by throwing ashes from the urn in The Undertaker's face. Jack Tunney saw this. Stripped Hogan of the championship, put it on the line in the Royal Rumble match. So that brings us to how the title was on the line in the 1992 Royal Rumble. Again, I do not repeat the rules of the Royal Rumble like the WWE does every year. I did that in my 1998 re-review. You can go watch that if you need to know the rules of the, of the Royal Rumble match. 
But the British Bulldog starts with the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and Ric Flair in his Royal Rumble debut enters number three. Ric Flair would go on to win this Royal Rumble and become the WWE Champion. So, why is this Rumble match considered the greatest of all time? Again, as per usual, entry order will be in the description box, as well as uh, most elimination longest lasting superstars. Uh, the only real notables that made their Royal Rumble debut here are Ric Flair and Sid Justice. In fact, this is Sid Justice or Psycho Sid's only Royal Rumble match he's ever been in as of the as of 2016. Uh, so, uh, one of the reasons it's considered the greatest uh, WWE uh, Royal Rumble match in history is very simple. Uh, half of its field currently sits in the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, it has 15 people who were elected to the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, 14 if you erase Hogan from the Hall of Fame like the WWE's done. Uh, so that's that makes it really prestigious now. Also, like I said, this is the first time the Royal was actually for a guaranteed something instead of just a bragging right kind of thing. This is where the WWE got the idea to do something with the Royal to make it prestigious every year. Uh, so... And the ending does set up Hogan and Sid just at WrestleMania 8, but I don't really want to talk about that much because that never should have been the WrestleMania 8 main event. Uh, this Royal Rumble is a five-star classic. It's out of the first five Rumble matches, it's the best one. It's the best and greatest one of the entire show. Uh, so it's a five-star Royal Rumble, which gives us 11 and a half stars out of 25, which means that this is a C minus show. Yeah, the Royal Rumble's the greatest all-time Rumble match is only a C-minus show because the undercard's not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, so, again, this will this and 91's and 93's, which will also be uploaded later, uh, will be in the Revisiting the Rumble playlist. If you like the video, like button is down there, subscribe button is down there, and thank you for watching. Bye.